Hello and welcome to this easy looping abstract animation tutorial in Blender 3.6. We're going to be using geometry nodes but just keeping it super chill and relaxed so it's a good intro if you've never used those before. So without further ado, let's get into it. Go ahead and open Blender 3.6, press A to select all, X to delete, and delete everything. Then add a new default cube, split the screen by clicking and dragging in the top right, and then change this pane to be the geometry node editor. Press N to get rid of this menu on the right and click new to create a new geometry nodes network. The first node that we'll need will be a mesh primitive line and we'll also need an instance on points node. We will instance the cube geometry onto the points of the mesh line and we're gonna want to pipe that into the group output. You'll see that on the screen here what we can do is change the mesh line to endpoints. We'll want that to go from negative one to one. And then in this screen here, we can just shift into edit mode with tab and we can press S and Z to scale the instance cube until it is the correct size so that it doesn't intersect with the other cubes. I'm actually gonna set this count to six. We can press tab again, S, Z, to rescale. And then we can move on to rotating these cubes based off of their position in the stack. The way that we'll do that is with the index of the instance. So each of these instances or these individual cube objects have an index associated with them. And what we can do is we can set the Z rotation of each cube based off of that instance. To do that, we'll need a combine XYZ node so that we can affect only the Z component of the rotation. We can just pipe the index into there and then the output into the rotation input. And we can see all of the instances rotating based off of their index. So to control the amount of rotation, the first thing that we can do is add in a math node, set that to divide, and then divide by the largest index. We have six instances and the index starts at zero. So the largest instance index is five. So that's what we divide by. Now we can see all of these instances rotating from zero to one radians along the Z axis, but it's a little bit easier to work in degrees. So what we're gonna do is shift D to copy that math node and then change it to a two radians node. And now instead of rotating between zero and one radians, we're rotating between zero and one degrees. So you can barely see the rotation in our viewport. And what we can do to fix that is shift D to duplicate this divide math node, change it to multiply. And then let's say we want to multiply by 90 to rotate by 90 degrees. So now you see that this bottom instance is rotated zero. This top is rotated 90 and you can see how that matches up. We can go to 180 if we want to see that rotate all the way around and just drag this down to see that. The next step is that we want to control not only the rotation of this top instance, but also the rotation of this bottom one. The way that we'll do that is that we will replace this multiply node with a mix node. And then we'll set the factor to the index divided by the largest index, so that's a value between zero and one. And so now, as we go up the cube, we are interpolating between the A rotation at the bottom cube index, or the bottom rectangular prism index, and the B rotation at the top instance. With these controls in place, we can move on to animation. Go down to your timeline and set the end frame to 60. Then set a keyframe on both the A and B values by pressing I. Move to frame 30 and then click and drag on both of these fields to select them both, click in 180 and then set another keyframe. Next, we're gonna offset the animation of the B rotation from the offset of the A rotation. So we'll do that by going into the graph editor, clicking view and frame all to see everything. Press N to hide that right menu. Click in the window to deselect everything double click on the B value to select it, and then press G and X just to move it along the X axis. Then if you press spacebar, you can see our final animation. Before we move on to lighting and rendering, we're gonna change the geometry of our stack just a little bit. 
So what we're going to do is jump back into our geometry node editor and we're going to add two nodes after the instance on points node. The first one is going to be a realized instances node. And what this does is it converts the instances to geometry. So the modifiers that we'll use in just a second won't have any effect on the instances, but they will on geometry. So you just realize them and you're good to go. The last node that we'll need is a set shade smooth node because especially with the glass material we'll be using, any non-smooth shading will be super apparent in your final render. Then hop over to your modifiers panel and add in a bevel modifier. Set the amount to something really, really low like 0.001 and then add a subdivision surface modifier and then crank up the levels to five or six, but let's do five in both your viewport and render. To set the material for our animation, we're actually gonna have to go back into our geometry nodes, put in a set material node, create a new material by going to the materials tab, hitting new, let's name that glass, and then let's select that material here. We're not going to do a whole lot with this material, we're just going to set it to be a glass BSDF and then we're going to switch to the shader editor, but we're not going to change the object nodes at all, we're just going to switch into the world material and edit these. For this animation we just want a color gradient from the south to the north pole, so we'll do that by going into our input nodes, bringing in a geometry node, and then we're going to take this position input and put it into color. We actually just want the Z component of that though, so we'll go into our converters, we'll do a uh, separate XYZ node, and then just use the Z component. So if I hit render, you'll see that we have a sort of horizon line, but we want the black to start at the south pole and then have a gradation up to the north pole. And the way that we can do that is with a math converter node, set that to multiply add, and actually these default settings of 0.5 and 0.5 are gonna give us exactly what we want. Now we can just lay a color ramp node down to control the colors. And you can see that I can just edit these at will, add a couple, and change the color in the middle to change that to yellow. And we have these nice gradations. Let's set this setting to ease, and we'll come back to this in a second. So before we play with our lighting and material settings, what we're gonna wanna do is change some of the rendering settings. First, we'll change to cycles, and then we're gonna go and change our light paths to have a really high number of bounces because we're dealing with glass. So we wanna make sure that we get all the bounces that we need. Then we'll need a camera. So I'll hit Shift A, I'll add a camera. I'll say View, Align View, Align Active Camera to View. So now the camera is looking through our viewport. Then I'm gonna go to this View tab in the End menu and click Camera to View. So this locks the camera to the view. So now I can move this around however I like. I'm gonna choose this view for now. I'll hit end again and uncheck that to save my camera location. And I can immediately see that something is a little bit off with my glass shader. If I go into that material, I can see that the roughness is set to 0.5. Let's just set this to something really low like 0.01. And that's gonna look a little bit more like we want it to. Let's turn off this show overlays button and then we can get a good idea of what our final render is gonna look like. Lastly, let's go into these settings. Uh, they're called the output settings and click this render region checkbox. So we're only rendering within the camera region. Now the name of the game is tweaking our color ramp colors and positions until we get something that we really like. So that's what I'm doing here, just messing with the colors and the positions, finding something that I think looks cool. And then I change the focal length of the camera to 250, and that's so we don't see as much of the world gradient in the background, and we just get a little slice of it, so you just see this blue to black that looks pretty good. Here we enable denoising to make the preview a little bit faster and smoother, and we also turn on motion blur to the default settings. And there you have it. That's how you create an easy abstract looping animation in Blender 3.6 using geometry nodes in under 10 minutes. If you've made it this far, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And above all, I hope you had fun. Until next time, bye.